Yeah, I mean, in general, if you're feeling that you want to start a company, just go for it. I think Finns may be almost overanalyzed. Not necessarily Finns. I think most uh, countries outside of the United States, even cities outside of Silicon Valley, right, in the United States, people tend to overthink, oh, I got to start a company. Maybe I should do it. Just, just shut the hell up and do it. If you really want to, just, just go for it. Because the longer you wait, you're just wasting time. So that's one thing. Two, I find in a lot of international, like, entrepreneurship kind of communities, people don't help each other out enough, right? Like, like they have their own company, they're all focusing on like, but like, they have, they have to realize like, if one company does well, it's not your company, everybody does well, right? So let's say here, Rovio and Supercell have done really well. So that's brought a lot of attention to Finland. That's a great thing. You guys should be applauding. Those guys are doing awesome because if there's more attention, that means more, more money or more good people are coming into your country, right? So if you're some lowly two-person startup, the fact that you know, Rovio or Supercell have done really well, that means that you might bump into a person, right? Well, one thing I've been seeing in like Finland and uh, Estonia and Sweden is like they're smaller countries, but somehow people have been rallying around the idea of entrepreneurship, especially in Finland and Estonia. I think people are like really behind it. Entre you know, young students are getting behind it. Even sometimes the governments are thinking about it, which is really great. I see countries like Russia, they're big and they're dispersed and there's almost too much money there from other resources that people could go after, right? It's almost a distraction. So like, I think almost like the small size of the countries has actually been helping it out. Uh, Sweden's been doing okay, but I think Finland's a little bit ahead. I think Estonia's a little bit ahead of Sweden as well too. I mean, there's a couple big companies in Sweden, but in general, I don't think it's as talked about and kind of having a more traditional career route or going to a big bank is still very common in Sweden. But here in Finland, I feel that it's, talked about more, it's actually a more accepted thing. Like, hey, being an entrepreneur is kind of cool, right? I, I think that Finland is going to be more than games, right? So I think games actually, I mean, I started a game company and then I evolved into other stuff. And I see actually a lot of entrepreneurs get into games because it's, it's a childhood obsession or it, it's something that brings a lot of happiness into their lives. And so people want to build something first that they really like. But as you get older, you see other opportunities. So I see a lot of entrepreneurs getting into gaming because either they loved it or there's been a few gaming companies that did really well in Finland that they, they kind of fed into that system. But as some of these guys and girls graduate or they you know, put their time into their game company, they move on to other things, right? And so I'm seeing more and more startups popping out that are non-game related. And I think that's going to bode really well. So I think gaming is almost like a tip of an iceberg. It's almost like if you see good gaming companies, that means you might see other good stuff popping out later. And another thing is like with the game industry, people get burned out. Like I know many people after five to 10 years of intensive work in the game industry, they, they kind of get tired of it and then they move on to other things. So yeah, in a couple of years, we'll be seeing some of those burnouts starting really cool companies in other fields. And there's some amazing engineering and design talent here, right? So I think there's some really great entrepreneurs here, right? Um, yeah, for me, like, I think they're just as good as anywhere else in the world, but sometimes they're a little bit either shy or they don't necessarily go out there and like, you know, spread the idea enough, or sometimes there's just a lack of funding resources for them in the past, right? But in general, I think the Finnish startup seems pretty solid, and I think there's, you know, a lot of good potential, and well, there's a lot of things already happening that are doing pretty well, especially for a country of five million people. I think, you know, you know punching above its you know, weight, I would say, so yeah. Yeah, traditional businesses are going to be screwed going forward. They're going to have to touch computers everywhere. You have to optimize things. I mean, for instance, there's a company called Uber, right? It's here in Finland now. And it's, it's a taxi and limousine company that my friend started. What did taxis and limousine have to do with startup, the technology? Nothing, right? These guys have effectively gone into in Silicon Valley and then also in, I think, 20 cities around the world and have disrupted the whole industry. Taxi owners and business are freaking out, right? So if big companies paper companies, whatever, don't get their act together. Some entrepreneur with a technology background knows how to optimize and you know how to use software to you know, make the business more streamlined is gonna get their lunch eaten by this young entrepreneur. So yeah, big companies have a lot to learn and to gain by interacting with tech companies. And they, if they don't, they will die. And that's fine. Let the young entrepreneurs come in and kick their butt.